As human beings, we search for the meaning of life. We ask the big questions about why we're here and where we're going. Even as children, we ask the question why, not just about trivial things, but about our whole being and our existence. Why am I here? Is there a meaning to all of this? Is there a God? Many people have discovered God, not by religion specifically, but by searching for understanding using our reason. Many people discover God by looking around them and seeing the world of material things come and go. It doesn't have to be here. And then they realize there must be something for there to be all these other things that must be there, that has to be there, that is immaterial, and that they call God. Others come to a belief in God simply because they see the beauty and complexity of the universe. And they marvel at that for there to be art, there must be an artist. Many of the world's greatest thinkers have discovered the belief in God. For Plato, God was the unchangeable good. For Aristotle, he was the first cause and the first mover of all things. For Isaac Newton, he was the architect of the laws of the universe. For Saint Anselm, he was that greater than which cannot be conceived. For Einstein, he was the cause of the intelligibility of the universe. Those who search for God and the meaning of life are called philosophers, the lovers of wisdom. Let's look at some art. Raphael was one of the most celebrated painters of the Renaissance. He was commissioned by Pope Julius II to paint a series of frescoes to decorate the papal apartments in the Vatican in Rome. What we're looking at here in the School of Athens is not a real school. What Raphael has done is brought together scholars from the classical world to create a sort of idealised school, an idealised school of wisdom. We can see Plato and Aristotle standing prominently at the centre of the composition with the arch behind them. Plato is the older man with the pink robe, white hair and bearded. We can see he's holding a book which is his Timaeus, his history of the universe. It's interesting to note his hand gesture, which is pointing upwards towards heaven, an indication, I think, of his interest in the eternal truths of beauty and goodness emanating from above. By contrast, Aristotle, a younger man, points his hand towards the material world, reflecting his interest in the physical materiality of life. He holds a copy of his own book, The Nicomachean Ethics. I like what Raphael has done in this composition by bringing together these classical scholars and we can look into their faces and see who we recognise. In fact, Raphael put himself into the picture. He is there in the place of Apelles and we think also that Bramante and Michelangelo are there too and maybe even that Leonardo da Vinci was the model for Plato himself. What Raphael is encouraging us to do is to look at these philosophers in their search for wisdom and I think that in our quest to understand this picture we look at it from that perspective to gain its full potential. The most perplexing and interesting being for philosophers to study is the human being, because amidst all the other animals and physical objects in this universe, human beings have intellect and free will. These are part spiritual realities that enable us to do all sorts of wonderful things like love and sacrifice and make uh, videos about theology and philosophy and speak of poetry and literature. Human beings are remarkable creatures in their own right and human beings are bent on searching for happiness. Everything they do is to discover happiness. But human beings never really discover the meaning of life from the world alone. Saint Augustine once said, Lord, you have made us for yourself and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. He discovered that the only way to happiness was found in God and what God was offering. Let's look at some art now. We're looking here at a small section of the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel and this is probably one of the most replicated religious images of all time with its iconic image of the near-touching hands of God the Father and Adam. 
Michelangelo was commissioned by Pope Julius II to paint the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel and the project took him four years. It's interesting, however, that Michelangelo himself was not keen to take on the commission. He felt that the other artists were trying to set him up by encouraging the Pope to give him a project when he viewed himself more as a sculptor rather than a painter. However, the reception of the paintings, which were universally acclaimed in his lifetime, proved them wrong. What we see here is God the Father, depicted as an older man in a pink flowing robe, leaning out his hand towards a recumbent Adam who is depicted naked. We're struck by the beauty of their hands reaching out to touch one another. Crucially, they're not just touching, they're about to. God is about to impart the spark of life to Adam. I think it's interesting to note the way that Michelangelo obviously lavished time and attention on the depiction of the arms and the hands. God's arm mirroring Adam's. And it makes us think that God, after all, made man in the image of himself. We're struck by the beauty of Adam's recumbent form. Michelangelo depicts him in a classical style, with his fine physique, the perfection of human beauty and creation. Behind God the Father are 12 mysterious figures, and scholars have long debated who they might be. But I think we can recognise that God the Father holds his left arm protectively around the female form of Eve. Creatures of intellect and free will are never going to be satisfied with the mere material world. We're made for so much more. And Christianity offers us the answer in this regard. Jesus Christ promises us the fulfillment of our being and an ending happiness. Pascal, the philosopher, said, he's like the key for the great door of our existence. You turn that key, the lock opens, and then the door, and we enter. This series of talks is to move beyond the mere belief in a creator or in the spirituality of the human person. It's to discover what we really believe from Jesus Christ about the meaning of our lives and the way to happiness.